subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Basic requirements for a good blaze like this are three. The fuel, some means of ignition, and plenty of oxygen to keep it all going. Three sides of the fire triangle. If any one of them is missing, there can't be a fire. In fire prevention, one effective way of removing the oxygen side is to replace it with a non-combustible inert gas. Clearly, sea-going tankers full of combustible cargo and flammable cargo gas are considerable fire risks. So, for some time now, it's been a widely accepted practice to inert their tanks. Conveniently, on board ship, there's a plentiful supply of inert gas, IG, from the boiler exhaust. With careful boiler combustion, the 21% oxygen in air can be reduced to as little as 2 in the flue gas, and typically to 5. So as nothing lower than 10% supports a fire, the boiler is a ready-made IG plant. If we can divert some inert flue gas and get it along to the tanks, we're in business. Although we've still got volatile cargo, and probably the means of ignition, starved of oxygen, there'll be no fire. So this is the basis of any IG system at sea. And as it's our surest protection against explosion and fire, let's take a close look at how it all works. As we've seen, we're off to a good start with the boiler. If we fit valves in the uptakes, we can tap gas off as we need it. But fresh from the boiler, flue gas isn't much use. It's scorching hot, dirty, and highly corrosive. So the next step is to cool it down and clean it. To do that, we have a scrubbing tower. Scrubbers vary from ship to ship, but essentially they all accept the hot flue gas through a water seal, cooling it, and passing it through baffles and seawater sprays till the solids have washed out and the corrosive sulphur is dissolved. Finally, there's a demisting stage to remove all water vapor. The efficiency of these systems is such that hot flue gas arriving at as high as 300 degrees centigrade leaves within one or two degrees of seawater temperature and with better than 95% of its solids washed out. Conditions inside the tower are pretty ferocious, so periodic checks are made to ensure that anti-corrosion linings are intact. Before inspection, it's essential to isolate and thoroughly ventilate the enclosed space. The atmosphere is tested and oxygen must reach a respirable 21% before anyone goes inside. During operation of the IG system, the quality of flue gas in and out of the scrubbing tower needs to be constantly checked. So here in the engine room, recorders monitor each uptake and sound alarms if the oxygen content rises above a preset prescribed safe level, normally five or six percent. Among other safety measures at this stage are a thermal probe to warn of dangerously high IG temperatures and a sight glass in the engine room against flooding in the tower and the possibility of water getting into the boiler uptakes. In automated ships, this device, like most of the others, is backed up by automatic alarms in the control room. After the scrubbing tire, the processed inert gas is delivered to the deck by fans. There are two to each system. These are typical heavy-duty models on a modern VLCC. The fans distribute gas to the cargo tanks via a water seal, and a branching deck main. The deck water seal is a non-mechanical, non-return valve with a continuous supply of sealing water and an alarm against water failure. IG passes freely, as long as pressure from the fan is greater than any back pressure from the tanks. 
but should back pressure exceed the fan, sealing water is driven up the inlet to form a plug, preventing flammable cargo vapour getting back to the engine room. Beyond the water seal, the deck layout is completed by a block valve, purge pipes and mast venting with a bypass pressure or vacuum relief valve set to operate at two and a quarter and minus a half PSI. Should high pressure or vacuum still develop despite the PV valve, as a final safeguard we have an oil seal. This is a branch from the gas main submerged in a bath of oil. The seal is filled to a set level when the cargo tanks are at atmospheric pressure. Then, under high pressure, oil is blown out to relieve the system. And for excessive vacuum, air is drawn in. Clearly, pressures are critical, so they are permanently displayed by repeaters in the engine room, on the bridge, and in the cargo control room. Again, there are automatic alarms against any failure. Well, that's the basic layout. Boiler, scrubbing tower and fans, water seal and oil seal, purge pipes, riser and relief valve. Essentially, this is the IG system for any tanker. The details do vary between crude and product carriers and between early and later ships. But whatever the vessel, the principle is the same. Now let's look at the operational side. We'll begin with the start-up procedure and the tanks full of air. First, open discharge valves from the scrubber and deck water seal. Open water supply valves to both units. Start salt water pump to the scrubber and open the discharge. Open the boiler uptake, the suction and discharge valves on the IG fan, and finally start the fan, test all alarms, and check the flue gas quality. Meanwhile, deck personnel must top up the oil seal, close all mast vents, check the bypass and tank lid relief valves, and open the appropriate purge pipes or manifold valves. Check discharge from the deck water seal, and when the engine room reports ready, open the main block valve at the poop front. IG will now drive the air out of the tanks through the purge pipes, or in later ships through the direct load lines to the manifolds. Issue from the pipes is tested with a portable analyzer till it matches the oxygen content of the IG supply. When it does, when all the tanks are full of inert gas, the purge pipes can be closed. Pressure through the system will now rise to equal the fan. At this stage, we can close the block valve and turn off the IG. On passage, in ballast or loaded, IG will be slowly leaking away all the time. So to maintain the correct positive pressure, routines must be established for checking and topping up. The next major operations for the system are loading and discharging. Loading procedures for a crude carrier are the same for cargo or ballast. With the IG shut down, all risers are opened till the IG pressure drops to zero. Now the loading begins and inflowing cargo displaces the remaining IG through the vapor lines.
When loading is complete, all vents are closed, gas pressure is checked, and if necessary, the IG started to bring the system back to pressure. At the discharge port, the procedure is reversed. With the IG running and all apertures and vents closed, cargo in the tanks is pumped out and the IG takes its place. In fact, towards the end, better than just taking its place, the gas pressure on top actually helps drive the liquid out, usefully speeding up the last stages of a discharge. On product carriers, Loading, discharging and loaded passage may be complicated by cargo parcels that need careful segregation. Serious losses can be incurred if valuable products are put off spec by vapour contamination through a common line. Against this possibility, product ships are fitted with duplicate gas mains and supplied with portable relief valves for fitting in specific vapour lines. Between the discharge and loading ports, tanks will normally be washed. Before washing, it's essential to purge all tanks with IG to clear any traces of cargo gas that would be dangerous if mixed with air. Purging can be done on a time basis, two changes of atmosphere generally being sufficient. Although thoroughly purged, it's essential to keep the IG running throughout tank cleaning. Pressure will be kept low, but nevertheless, before lifting any covers, it's important to check that each tank is depressurized by opening the appropriate sighting port or purge pipe. When washing is complete, the tanks are re-purged, all vents re-closed, and the system is brought back to pressure. A lot of maintenance, of course, is carried out on inerted ships. But for repair work inside tanks, obviously they must be thoroughly ventilated first. Gas freeing can be done in two ways, with portable fans or with the IG system blowing air. For the first method, the individual tank is locked open, isolated from the IG main, and portable fans are mounted in the tank washing apertures, either to suck out the IG or to blow in fresh air. During this exercise, the tank atmosphere must be carefully monitored. When the oxygen gets back to a normal 21% and the hydrocarbon reading on the explosimeter is zero, the tank can be entered. But the first man in must take breathing apparatus and an analyzer to check the remote parts of the tank. The portable fan should be kept running all the time to disperse any hydrocarbon vapor that might be released from disturbed scale or sludge. The second but slower way to gas free the tanks is with the IG blower. With the boiler uptakes closed and a blank removed on its suction side, the fan delivers fresh air to the deck main and ventilates the whole system. Gas freeing then completes our cycle. We've seen all the major operations. Primary inerting, loading and discharging, purging, tank washing and gas freeing for entry. We've seen the layout most of the nuts and bolts, and something of how the whole thing works. But there's still plenty to learn. Transferring cargo, maintenance, record sheets, and much more. So read the manuals, see the film again, and learn the drills. The IG system, properly operated and maintained, is essential to your safety, the ships, and the safety of everyone on board. Oh,